Hi, I'm Gary, M0TIG here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and today I'm going to revisit the Nano VNA FV2. However, there is a new version and that is the version 3. Now, there is very little difference uh, physically or to, to look at. However, this particular version has a much faster processor and is able to process uh, the information four times faster. It also has I believe it's 13 save points instead of the original six. So I've got it written down here. So it's actually got uh, the S21 um, has now 80 dB of dynamic range. The sweep points now are 501 as opposed to 201, I think it was. Calibration storage, it now has 13 instead of six. And here the sweep speed is 400 points per second. So it's a much, much faster device. So let's have a quick look. As I say, it's, again, they're beautifully packaged. Again, if you see that, you get the little card, a QR code there, which takes you to the uh, software, the any new firmwares, the manual and that sort of stuff. So make sure you just pop along. And what I've done with the manual here, I've actually just printed it out as a little booklet and yeah it's quite good to refer to so in here we've got and this is quite hard to get out which is sort of palm size i suppose and again it's exactly the same as the original i'll show you the original they are well packaged in there again you can see it's pretty much exactly the same sort of size and Again, it's USB-C. You've got some buttons on the side for the menu, which you can actually drive either via touchscreen or via the actual side buttons yourself, whichever you prefer. But it's also, it, it also doubles up as a little power bank. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can do that. The other thing is they've now enabled quite a lot of the command line sort of stuff on there. So you can set time and stuff like that for the saves. So when you save a file now, it will not only will it record the, um, the file name, but you can record the date and the time that it was done, which is really useful. Okay, so let's start it up and we'll just go through the menu system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate the first set of frequencies. And what you need to do is you need to set a start and end point. So for instance, we'll say, sorry, that's actually the center. So we can actually tap in the middle and we can say, we'll do a start, and we'll say one, uh, four, four, megs. So we're now starting at one, four, four, and we're stopping at one, four, five. Now, if we want to um, calibrate that and actually save it in, in a uh, memory slot, you just simply tap on the, on the screen there. If we come back, we can say calibrate here, and we can just tap on the calibrate screen there. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to tape our little red cover off. I'm going to try and get this so I, you can see this. In here, you'll see one of these doesn't have a pin, and that is the open one. So we just put that on there like so. And that just helps uh, with the keeping the you know, stray signals out. And we just say, we'll calibrate that open, and we get a little tick. And... Now we're going to do the short, and that's the one with the pin. And let's just connect that into port number one. And then we're just going to tap on, on short and let that kind of break. Now we've got the little tick. Now we need to do the load. And all these parts are provided in the box, by the way. And there you go, and we're going to tap on load, and away we go. And um, you could go on and do the through uh, measurement as well. We're not going to do that. We're just going to tap on done. Now at this point we can save, and we're going to save it in save number three. Now on the old version you only had six saves. This is two pages, so you've actually got twelve plus save zero, making I think thirteen saves. So you can then just tap on save number three or whatever. And now that's it, it's saved. Okay, from that point on, so we've now got a dummy load on there, 50 ohms. And you can see 
without the dummy load in, it goes completely open. We put that in now and we're now measuring this dummy load. Okay, and unlike the other one, you've actually got quite a lot more detail on this, which has um, caught me by surprise because it's actually much, much finer um, points. Instead of, I think it was 200, you've now got 501 um, points in total. So it's a much, much finer, more accurate display, but it's also four times faster. But here we've actually got the SWR and the, there should be the Z as well, I think. Yeah, 50 ohms. So um, what you can also do, you can add markers. So if we touch on marker, we can actually say, um, we can actually set a marker on the actual, um, on, on, the, on, the, on the screen. So we can say, okay. Where's it gone? So, and then what you can do, you can actually you can actually drag the marker across. I'm doing it with a pencil. It's not a very, very good way of doing it, but you can actually drag the marker across to a particular point on the frequency there. And that will actually give you on the display here, you can see it's telling us the frequency and what the um, Z and what the SWR is on that one frequency. So yeah, I hope that is uh, useful. And you know, these are to say in stock and um, you know, pretty good value for money, I think. So yeah, fabulous. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna pop over to the computer and show you the peak um, design, the electronic design transistor tester, um, some of the display on that. Okay, so we've left the um, mini VNA just for a moment and I've come over to the, um, to the computer to show you these uh, peak um, test meters. Now we do the full range of these meters um, and the one that I tend to use more than anything is the little LCR uh, meter and also the, uh, the little DCA Pro here. Um, I like to build kits uh, quite a lot and quite often when you buy these sort of cheaper kits they come with um, like a whole handful of like transistors and they're not matched or they're certainly not um, labeled and sometimes they're really really strange manufacturers so getting the pinouts and stuff and the and the uh, data sheets accurate for these is quite difficult and that's where one of these really comes into its its own in fact all of these meters i mean this one is uh, an esr meter this one will give you the um, capacitance and the actual uh, resistance over the, the the capacitor so you can pick out whether or not you've got good bad old stocks or capacitors that sort of thing this one here, um, this one tests uh, triaxant uh, tri resistors, um, and this one here is for Zeners. There's also an LCR meter as well, but um, as I say, I've just grabbed a handful for the moment, but we keep all of the whole range of those, and we can arrange for the calibration, so if you've already got one of these, so we can get that, well, that done for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly show you um, just some of the information that say this will give you because you can connect this one to the computer and it's really really useful so let's have a quick look now all I've done here and you can see that is I've got a little J310 transistor there which is a pretty bolt standard um, transistor and I've not worried about which color um, clamp to put on any leg because it just doesn't matter it's going to tell me what those legs are so let me connect this to the computer okay so the first thing that i've done is i've run a, it's, it's actually done it itself it's run a test and this is now giving me a whole load of information there which will be or may be useful to you um, but what it is really really good for is it's now telling you which um which color uh, clamp is attached to which leg so we've actually got green red and blue so we now know the green is on the drain the red is on the source and the blue is on the gate so we now know how our transistor is uh, or JFET is uh, configured so now if we want to we can com we can compare uh, say two JFETs so for instance I've actually got two of these transistors and I've run the tests already and you can see here that JFET1 is slightly different than JFET2. Now this might be inter you know, interesting to you, maybe you're doing a project where you need to match things up, and this is where this sort of thing comes in really, really useful. So there you go. So that's a very, very quick overview of this. Um, 
and I'll show you the uh, the software running. So if I say, for instance, um, we'll we'll do this one. Let's clear this uh, this chart. We clear all of those. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll say we'll start that one. It will just run through its little check. And it plots out the, uh, the voltage um, drain. So there you go. Um, and you can also update the firmware as well here as well. So you, you just click on that. It will actually go to a hex file. So you can update the firmware. If you've got a new hex file, you can do that. Update the firmware with it. Um, yeah, and compare graphs. So yeah, hope that was useful. That's pretty much an overview of the VNA Mini or the Mini VNA, um, the version three. And obviously just to sum up of the peak devices and looking at the transistor tester. If again, if any of these are useful to you or you've, uh, you, you want to uh, look at or in, any information that you need further, then do give us a call on 0345 2300599 or you can email us at sales at hamradio.co.uk. So thanks for watching and speak to you soon.